Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today we're going to be having a chat to writer, founder and artistic director of British theatre company, Mischief Theatre, Henry Lewis. Now you may remember Australian actress Brooke Satchwell on the show a few years ago when she was in the play that goes wrong. Now this is Henry Lewis's production. So we're going to have a chat about that, of course. And also we're going to celebrate the release of their BBC One series, The Goes Wrong Show, which Australians can now stream on Amazon Prime Video. So we have so much to cover today. So let's get into it now. Henry, welcome to Rave It Up. How are you going today? Very well, thank you. Very, very well. How are you? I am fantastic. And it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. I'm a big fan. I saw the play that goes wrong and Peter Pan goes wrong when they were live here in Sydney. And I've also watched every episode of that new Amazon Prime series. So I cannot wait to talk about it tonight. <laughs> but before we do talk about that new series, I'd actually love to start from the beginning, if that's okay, to get a good idea of how you made it to where you are today. So you are the founder, writer, and artistic director of British theatre company, Mischief Theatre. Also, <laughs> I love how it's uh, like fictitiously known as the Cornley Polytechnic Drama Society. Love that name. <laughs> and when I was researching you, I found out that you founded the company in 2008 with a few other students from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art in West London. Where did the idea all come about for you guys? Did you just want to create something for yourselves in, instead of, I guess, working for someone else's projects? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think we, um, we really enjoyed comedy and, and we enjoyed uh, improvised comedy quite a lot. So we, we got together and did quite a lot of improv while we were still at drama school. So we did uh, shows at the Edinburgh Festival every year. So sort of, we, you know, we were at drama school, but in the summer we would go to the Edinburgh Festival and do, do a show. We started to do more shows in London. And then once we graduated, we started to do more scripted work. And so the first kind of big scripted show we did was, was yeah, it was the play that goes wrong. And um, it came from a collaboration I'd had when I was a bit younger with a guy called Michael Green, who wrote a book called uh, The Art of Course Acting. And um, that's a really funny book about his sort of misadventures in amateur theatre. And uh, he's also written some short course acting plays where sort of things go a bit awry. And so I thought, well, could that be a full sort of full two act murder mystery show? Um, and so that's where the play that goes wrong came from. And, uh, working with him and stuff and um, yes yeah, so we, we, we started in a small way it didn't actually start as a two-act show at all it started as a, a, an hour-long show that we did in a pub theatre in North London and then um, we took it to a sort of um, slightly bigger studio space and then we wrote the second act and took it on a tour in the UK that was this was kind of 2014 um, and then brought it into the West End um, and then it's been running there ever since obviously currently on pause because of the, uh, the pandemic but um uh, hopefully reopening soon. So yeah, so it's been a real sort of adventure and that was how we started doing that show and then we branched out and did other things. We did Peter Pan Goes Wrong, we also did the comedy about a bank robbery which is kind of slightly different, you know, similar kind of slapstick humour but but not goes wrong, you know. Uh, and then yeah, from, from that the TV series came as well. So was the other students that we were talking about that you started off with, was that Jonathan and, and the other Henry as well or is there also more? That's right, well there are more. John, Henry Shields and I uh, lived together after we graduated drama school so that was uh, we wrote the first version of play that goes wrong in our flat together um in sort of probably in 2020 2013 um uh, or 20 yeah 20 late 2012 um and then um we also had our sort of regular gang so dave hearn and nancy zamet and uh, charlie russell um who were uh, as long with uh, Greg Tannehill and Rob Falconer were in the first version of Play That Goes Wrong, so they were kind of the team. Um, and then uh, the team uh, sort of changed a little bit over the years, and we brought uh, Chris Leesk and, and Brian Corrigan into the show, into the TV show. Um, they were brilliant. So, yeah, it's kind of uh, lots of people still there from, from the beginning. We've recently just done an open-air tour of our improvised show in the UK, um, and um, lots of people from, you know, um, like Harry Kershaw and people like that from right from the, you know, who've been involved from the beginning as well. And he's been in lots of the recasts of the shows. So 
lots of people who were still who were involved right back from the beginning are still involved now, which is really cool. It shows you the great product you have that people are sticking around and they want to always be involved in it because I just noticed all the episodes of the show, it's all the exact same actors, it just changed the characters and, and obviously the storyline. I, I really love that. Oh, good, good. But well, we're making a second series. Yes, that was a future question I was going to ask, but I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it so much, and I'm sure everybody else is too, that we're kind of like, is there going to be another season? You just always want more and more. It's one of those shows. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, I know there's, there's some more some more coming up. Absolutely. Is there a release date for that yet, or we just got to... Not yet. Not yet. But hopefully, hopefully soon. We just got to keep a lookout on social media and things like that to keep updated. Absolutely. You can follow, yeah, we've got Mischief Comedy as our sort of uh, handle and stuff, so you can uh, you can follow us and, and yeah, all the news will be posted up there for sure. Cool. Keep, definitely keep an eye out for that and I'll get you back on the show then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you guys come up with the name Mischief Theatre and even also Cornley Polytechnic Drama Society as well? How did you guys come up with those names? Well, Cornley Polytechnic, well, Pol so Polytechnics, I don't know if you, do you have Polytechnics in, uh, in Australia? I don't know, but it's... Um, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> it's like a defunct kind of, there were like technical colleges that were around, I think, 80s, 90s. But there are no, there, there's no, they don't exist anymore. They were all changed into universities. But yeah, they, they were sort of like more of a skills based kind of training. I think that they did. And um, so I quite like the idea that yeah, when all the polytechnics in the UK were changed into universities, Cornley got left off the list. So it's the only polytechnic left in the country. And um, yeah, and Cornley, we 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 looked for. We were sort of trying to come up with a place that sounded like a small town in in, in the UK. Um, but, but they didn't exist. So Cornley is, is so what, what we came up with is somewhere that sounds most like a most like a town. And mischief, um, we I don't know. We came. Well, I think Henry. Sh I think it was a Henry Shields uh, creation. Mischief. Um, we wanted a name, you know, that sort of reflected the sort of silly uh, kind of fun comedy stuff that we did. That you get up to a lot of mischief. <laughs> so they do. So yeah. So the mischief. Yeah. And I'm guessing, um, you know, that you had, you guys had a lot of challenges in the beginning and I guess trying to get your name out there and proving that, you know, you guys know what you're doing and you're really good at it. What are some of the challenges that, you know, you can share with us today that maybe some people might be going through themselves if they want to start up something like that? Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, it, it's really competitive, obviously, like it's a really competitive industry um, and uh, it's tough to, to, to get a foothold, I think. Um, and so I, I don't know, I would really recommend, uh, you know, creating our own work and that's sort of what, what, what we've done. And I, I found it, you know, really rewarding all the time, all the way through everything we've done. You know, it's really fun to have a creative hold on it and, and to be, to be, to be making it and coming up with the, the idea and doing something you really believe in, which sometimes as an actor, you don't necessarily always get, you know, sometimes you get a part that you love, but also, you know, you might get a, a part that you're not so excited by. Uh, and it kind of, you know, it comes in, uh, uh, I don't know, it's a mixed bag, perhaps. Um, but if you're creating your own stuff, you can always create what you want, obviously, you know, within reason. And so, um, yeah, so I would really recommend that. And I think um, it's a really satisfying thing to put something on. And, um, you know, we just did it in a really small way. I mean, the first show we ever did was, was you know, inc incredibly, you know, incredibly simple. And the first version of The Play That Goes Wrong was pretty simple. I mean, we did everything ourselves we we, you know, we built the set and we uh did all the marketing and designed the posters and you know, all those sort of jobs that go with it um you know sorted out the lighting everything so um yeah we and, and you know just did it for a, a you know quite a small amount of money put it on it was in a 60 seat theater and um and from there it kind of it kind of grew so i think the challenge for people wanting to do that and get find a place in the industry is kind of figuring out a way to start like a uh, a sort of niche something that they can do that is you know uh sort of sellable i suppose but you know it's the audiences want to see and so yeah I, I would really recommend trying to trying to do work that you, you know you really care about and you think is unique and that no one else is doing try and find what that is what your voice is and, and find a way to put it on whether that's i don't know whether that's do, making a short film or whether that's uh finding a finding a venue and you know i don't know so yeah i think i think yeah finding a way to begin and and create your own stuff is is key i think to surviving in this business yeah never give up guys it's difficult but so rewarding as we can see <laughs> was this always what you wanted to do as a career too or were there other careers that you wanted to pursue when you were younger 
or like you know what they call the plan b <laughs> uh, yeah i'm a plan b no i didn't i didn't i didn't really have i mean there's other stuff i would i'm sure i would enjoy um i'm kind of interested in like um uh, i've always been interested in science and i don't know masses about science but i've always been interested in science and um i thought for a while i'd be a police officer but i think really i know yeah weird well that was more when i was kind of i don't know maybe like 10 or something but then when i was kind of in my mid-teens like 13 14 i kind of was really into theatre and comedy and stuff and um, I, there was no real theatre at the school I went to so I went to a local youth theatre and got loads of experience there, I went to a couple of different ones, that's where I met Mike Green and, and uh, uh, the Questers Youth Theatre in Ealing. Yeah, no, and so so that was kind of where I sort of developed my uh, passion for, for performing and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, and so, so I kind of did quite a lot of sketches and comedy stuff before I went to drama school, so kind of when I left and while, while, while I was there, you know, while we were there kind of forming a comedy troupe, I guess that was kind of a natural sort of progression for that. But yeah, so, so um, yeah. Perfect example of someone following their passion then. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> a bit. <laughs> yeah, you loved it, you went for it. That's, that's what matters. <laughs> now, onto the creative side of your projects and, you know, all the whole new TV series, a play that goes wrong, Peter Pan that goes wrong. How do you come up with the different play ideas? You know, what, what do you, do you just take inspiration? Like, did you like Peter Pan and you just went, yep, got to do something like that? Or can it just be stuff around you and it just comes to you? A bit of both. I mean, I think that um, after we've done Play That Goes Wrong, I think we thought, well, it would be really fun to do a show that already exists. So the play within the Play That Goes Wrong is a play that we've written ourselves. Um, we thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to see what Cornley do with an existing script? So we thought, well, what could they do? And we thought it'd be quite fun to do a Christmas show and quite fun to do something quite ambitious. And so Peter Pan immediately stuck out because obviously you've got to do the flying and you've got to do, um, there's loads of different things, the crocodile and the, you know, so many different uh, bits to that. So many things that definitely can go wrong. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of scope and, and sort of opportunity there. So that was fun. So we sort of wrote, we wrote that one and, um, We've sort of we've then since done um, we've done Christmas Carol uh, for BBC, but also um, the new series, uh, or the, the series on Amazon Prime, is all um, original stories, which is kind of easier, I think, to write to do with to do a kind of goes wrong treatment of an original story because you can twist and turn the story however you, you know in a way that is useful to you to, to to set up all the physical comedy and all of that kind of stuff. If you're following an existing text, obviously you, you, there's certain things you've got to do and you've got to really find. We've got, we got this scene, how are we going to sort of subvert it? Um, which is fun, and, you know, and, and, and often there's lots of fun stuff in that, uh, but it doesn't necessarily always sort of slot in perfectly with everything you want to do comedically. So, um, so yeah, in the series, we've, we've, we've done all original stories. Um, and then beyond that, I don't know, it's been sort of like for comedy about a bank robbery, I think we really thought we were interested in doing something that's a bit different from Goes Wrong, but still had lots of sort of big laughs in it and as a stage show and loads of physical stuff and um, we'd done a lot of stuff a lot of sort of we, uh, a drama school we called it melodrama where um, you know you use kind of minimal props and uh, you create lots of visual different scenes and you move from scene to scene very slickly and um, there's still sort of bits of that in, in, in that show as well where you sort of got these almost like filmic kind of montages but on stage um, so that, that way that yeah well, I've even noticed in like the new TV series that, you know, there's kind of every single episode is a different genre of play too, because you've got like The Lodge, which was a bit of a thriller, and then you've got The Trial to Watch, it's a bit more of a drama, and then the romance one. So you, you're kind of covering them all. And then Christmas, obviously. <laughs> if you don't like one, you're going to like another one, you know, there's something for everybody. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, no, we keep, we've keep we tried to find for the second series all, all new kind of as many different theatrical genres as we could find. Uh, so yeah, lots of new stuff in there. I'm excited for that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I mustn't be the only one thinking, like, you know, looking at these things that are going wrong in the play, and obviously they're all planned, but they're not supposed to be planned. And wondering, like, how have you come up with a lot of the things that are going wrong? Do you just... Do you um, write your whole play and then just go, okay, that would be really funny if that happened then or, you know, the, the stage fell down at that moment? Like, <laughs> Well, some, sometimes I think the genre gives you lots of stuff, you know, um, particularly like the, the Lodge, for example, I guess, you know, there's lots of fun stuff about a kind of thriller play, you know, there's lots of fun stuff uh, when, you know, it's supposed to be scary and, you know, 
we can sort of undercut that and play with that or little devices like you know the the light is going on there's lots of things that that gives you but also i think for writing the second series what we've tried to do um uh, which we started in the first series but wanted to do more of um was to uh, really start with the characters the characters of the actors um so as you say like it's the same group of actors each time and those actors you've got chris who introduces it as the director as well and is kind of the leader of the drama society then you've got my character robert who sort of thinks he's the you know the, the best actor in in the world uh, and then you've got kind of uh, you know all, it's all the different actors and they all got their own sort of uh, flaw the other guy that loves the attention and the camera <laughs> exactly exactly yes um yeah and so they've all got their own different different uh, different things which we tried to start from that and sort of decide what character they would play and who they'd be cast at as in the show and um and then sort of yeah sort of uh, work from there to see how we can unravel it from using the characters and, and, and unravel the show in a way that only that you know each character making mistakes that only they would make um which is fun and just give it a more sort of variety so that's yeah it's nice yeah that's so um, interesting to start from the actors that's something i don't think we would have thought of be like yeah they start with the the writing of the script and then and then maybe go to the the things that go wrong but yeah you got to start with the actors and and go with what goes with their character mm, 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 mm. And, and one of the challenges uh, that you guys face when coming up with a new you know stunt or prop fail because obviously you need to make sure the actors stay safe themselves or is this the only job that you don't have to worry about that <laughs> yeah no we do if have only to... <laughs> no we do have to make sure everyone's safe um and um yeah so there's a huge health and safety department behind everything that we do and yeah often the job is to make it look as dangerous as it can as it can look but whilst being completely safe yeah but it's sort of tricky cuz it quite often you know you're doing something like with the tv show you're doing you know you've got a shot of say me like this and then actually the thing that's going wrong is sort of just caught in the back of shot right because you're not focusing on that necessarily that's just accidental you know and and incidental and so um quite often you can't do what you'd normally do in film which is if someone's going to be hit by something or fall over or whatever you quite often there's a cut you know you and you can use that to to do you know to do the tricky bit or to hide the dangerous thing or to you know you can you know if someone falls over you do one shot of them going like this and then another shot of them hitting the floor in a very simple example um but obviously we you can't always do that quite often the entire stunt or the entire thing has got to happen in the shot um which is difficult because and, and makes it more time consuming more expensive because you really got to do everything so uh, you know there's nothing you know nothing is sort of faked in the series everything has actually happened and actually been done um yeah like live theater <laughs> has to be done exactly exactly as we would do on stage exactly what you can't come so it, so that's fun and exciting uh, but also is a, a real challenge as well and particularly for safety is a challenge uh, to make sure that all that stuff happens uh, happens safely. And you would think it would, it would be like easy to plan, you know, sets collapsing and for special effects to fail, but there's so much thought that goes into it and it's all about timing, but you guys make it look so effortless. Has that just been from practice? Thanks. Well, no, um yeah, I think I mean, you know, we've got for the TV show for the goes wrong show we we've got you know a, a big team of uh of people now who are really good at, at sort of coming together and there are so many different departments lots of visual effects stuff lots of uh, obviously lots of set props costume all things you know and, and, and the cast obviously in the direction and the, obviously the cameras which you don't have in theater have all got to come together and work in the right way so um it's yeah it's it's complex and everyone's got to really um nail their little you know everyone's a cog in the big machine so everyone's got to do the right you know the right thing at the right time so it's a complicated operation but um it sort of i don't know yeah we we sort of spend you know a couple of weeks for each episode rehearsing everything getting everything right everybody's what you know, all the other departments are watching the rehearsals really carefully to make sure that all the stuff that they're doing slots in with physical comedy you know if it's a tiny bit out you know it's not funny so you you really got to make sure everything is really really specific so yeah so it's it's uh, it's i think you know and then martin dennis who um directs the goes wrong show is brilliant and is really really you know, across everything and and just you know knows what things will be and has a lot of tv experience and knows kind of uh, how things work and really understands um how cameras work and, and you know really understands editing and everything so you know he's he's always got the sort of outside eye there as well and uh, and, and is brilliant at doing that so 
uh, yeah, I guess it's a, a combination of all those things really to make it work. How many people are on, on set then? That must be a lot. <laughs> well, um, for the first series, a lot. I mean, I th there'll be less, I mean, th this year uh, when we're making it because of all the COVID restrictions, it's going to be quite different. Um, so we're going to have to have, um, whereas before you have a big room, like a rehearsal room with the set and you'd have people coming in and working on the set and changing things or move, you know, moving something a little bit if we need to move it to get it into the right shot, for the, you know, all of that um, and costume fittings and people coming in and out and stuff and the rehearsal going on. It was all a bit of a mishmash, but um, it'll be quite separated now. Uh, so we'll do our rehearsal on the set and then we'll clear and everything gets cleaned and then the set builders come in to do their stuff and then everything gets cleaned again. And then, you know, so it's sort of... It'll take longer that way. <laughs> it certainly will. It certainly will. It'll be a real challenge. And we're starting in a couple of weeks and I'm not quite sure. I'm not, it's going to be a really unique experience, I think. But I'm, uh, I'm also looking forward to it because I think it'll be, it'll be interesting. Well, so for everyone watching today, make sure you have respect for season two. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're, yeah. It's been a crazy one. So. <laughs> well, good luck. I send all my good thoughts to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Now, I interviewed um, Australian actress Brooke Satchwell on our show several years ago when she was in the play that goes wrong here in Sydney, and her character had to like pretend to be unconscious, you know, while her, like her co-stars were like chucking her out of a window and stuff. And she said that the job is so physical, like she ended up having like so many bruises. <laughs> Do you find that too? Because obviously you're featured in every single episode of this new series and I guess I want to know is when there are deliberate falls do you have some sort of padding there for them <laughs> or you're just like good luck <laughs> <laughs> no no there's always there's always padding or quite often what uh, what's called a box rig which is basically like a big pile of cardboard boxes um which is very very effective for breaking your fall and the, the, we have a stunt team who uh, literally work out they take the weight of the person the height of the fall do a calculation work out what you know what how many boxes deep the thing the struck the box the pile of boxes will be in order that it will break your fall effectively um and so uh, that's very very clever and you know all of that working out how to keep everyone safe while falling over i would say bruise wise i yeah we definitely you definitely do get some bumps and bruises along the way even though it's safe it is still very physical um certainly i think you get more doing the theater shows like if we're doing a six month run or you know however many months run of a show um you definitely get more bruises because you're doing this sort of you're doing things every night so you kind of pick up knocks and hits along the way with the tv a bit less so because you're doing it you know you're rehearsing it and then doing it really you're performing it kind of once or twice you know if you take um so it's not the same kind of uh, repetition so yeah so on tv we get away a bit a bit lighter with the bruises i think but not much <laughs> and as I said, you feature in every single episode of this new series and you've been doing this for quite a while, you know, not just even writing it, but also acting it. Are the scenes still funny for you, even when, you know, when you know what's going to happen before it happens? <laughs> and how do you, like, control your laughter if it is funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes definitely it's hard not to laugh, for sure. Um, obviously it's important not to laugh because obviously for the actors that we're playing this is a tragedy and a disaster and not funny at all but um, yeah generally like we usually laugh a lot while we're writing the script and then obviously you go into like you do read throughs and there's lots of laughter because all these sort of actors are doing it for the first time and that's fun then you get into rehearsals and you sort of start to do it again and again and again so obviously you laugh a bit less because you, you know you know you know you know what's coming um, and you're used to it and you know you've, you've done it and you know what everyone's going to do and you know what people's faces are going to look like and all of this you sort of everything's a bit more uh, ready to sort of you know uh, predictable and then um, you kind of get to like the, towards the like three quarters of the way through the rehearsal and that's if if there's ever a fear of like oh my god this isn't going to be funny it's then because everyone's so used to the material that that sort of you, there's not much laughter anymore in the room and then you go in and do it with the audience and then you re you remember where all the laughter comes again you know you, you kind of think oh yeah of course that's all pretty funny and that's really nice that's nice it's nice to have the live audience for the tv because they come in and bring the whole thing to life again which is great have there been any scenes that have been really really hard for you where it's still funny <laughs> yeah there's been a few things i don't know i mean there's lots of stuff in the series that makes me laugh a lot I don't, i'm trying to think of the uh i mean yeah like the whole sequence in the pilot uh with the body double i think is is very funny that made me laugh a lot um 
and uh, I think probably uh, had I had I been in that bit, I would definitely have been struggling to keep a straight face. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so there's uh, yeah a real um, yeah I mean yeah definitely it's, it's sort of tricky to to not laugh. I think with the TV weirdly like I think it, 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 you, I found myself sort of laughing less because because the, the time is so tight. Like you've got got like usually we do for each episode obviously lots of rehearsal but then we have one day of shooting pre-recorded bits so a few scenes usually complicated scenes quite technical stuff um or stuff that takes a long time to set up we'll do um and then um we'll do then most of it the next day we do camera rehearsal and then the live shoot in the evening and then that's it so really it's two days and um we yeah we we then do the live scenes and any pre-recorded bits we play into the audience to get the laughter and stuff and um so yeah so so you're re- so really you know you it's a, it's a you get a take or, or two maybe maybe three uh and that's kind of it and then we're moving on you know so so i think there's there's that pressure as well to be like we've got to get it we've got to, got to get it and i think Sometimes I think that probably that wasn't my expectation. I think I always sort of thought before I'd done TV, it was like, well, you know, obviously you can just do it as many times as you want until you get it right. But that's not quite the case, um, you know, because just like the studio time is it, it, so expensive and all the rest of it. So, yeah, so there's there's a pressure to not to not laugh. I was going to say, it was just amazing acting ability to like not laugh. But since you've run through it so many times, still a great actor though. I will I will still give that compliment. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> you are very welcome. I'm here to give you compliments all day. <laughs> and I got to say, you look like you had a lot of fun in the Christmas episode, pretending to be drunk. Yeah, that was good fun. I did enjoy that. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay, okay. No, it was, uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that one a lot. It was very weird. I think we filmed it in like April, so it was just a bit weird. But uh, Christmas in July in April. We gave all the audience Christmas hats, and they were a bit bemused, I think, why they were getting Christmas hats in it. In April. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and do you have a favorite episode out of all six episodes that are on uh, Amazon Prime now for all of us in Australia? Very good question. I like them all. I, like, I do like them all for different reasons. But I think probably Trial to Watch is probably my favorite um, of, of them all. Big fan of the pilot also. Big fan of 90 Degrees also. And the Lodge. I don't know. It's hard to say. But no, I think Trial to Watch. No, Trial to Watch, I think. I think uh, I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed doing that a lot. And I think the audience really, really enjoyed that. And we had, we did it with the way we re- rehearsed it. We had sort of, because there's obviously lots of, um, there's the small set and there's lots of big sets. So the rehearsal room we had was absolutely full of sets. Like and the rehearsal room wasn't big enough to do any of the moving of the sets apart or anything like that. So, um, so that was all kind of imagined. And we were just walking between the sets and rehearsing the this, this scenes on the sets, but not doing any of the transitions and stuff. So I think when we finally got into the studio, it really came to life with all of those transitions and you really, you know, all that stuff was really fun and it, it really moved on and the scenes sort of rolled into one and doing it for the audience was was really, really fun. Um, so yeah, definitely enjoyed that one a lot. Well, that's one of my faves, a trial to watch and also 90 Degrees, just because like everything with the sets was just hilarious. <laughs> uh, as soon as like the, you know, director is saying all this stuff at the beginning that, you know, the... Uh, stage designers have gotten it wrong you're like oh god this is going to be hilarious i can already see this coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah it's it was it was pretty crazy that one we had uh, we had that was the last one we shot and um yeah just a whole day of being on our sides like that was pretty crazy <laughs> no wonder you left us to the end <laughs> yeah definitely the most complicated one so we kind of had to give ourselves the time to yeah <laughs> That's all on Amazon Prime Video for everyone in Australia now. And yeah, go check out those favourite episodes. <laughs> and yeah. something else I'd love to chat to you about today, Henry, is back in 2017, you were on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. That is so exciting. How was it to be on The Tonight Show? I, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> it, was re- well, no, it was really fun. Yeah, it was lovely. We, we sort of knew Jimmy from, he'd seen a couple of the shows in London and he'd seen Play That Goes Wrong when it was on Broadway and um, JJ Abrams who was producing the, the Broadway run um, was was sort of going on and uh, we, we sort of said well you know he sort of said well why don't you guys come on and 
uh, and, and sort of do a bit. So we thought, well, that would be fun. So we, yeah, we sort of wrote a few scripts and came up with some ideas and, uh, and um, yeah, ended up performing that, that sort of sketch, which was fun. Well, I was going to ask, how long did it take you to come up with what was going to happen on the show? It was quite quick in the end. I think we were sort of, um, we had a few ideas written down before we sort of went in, but then we kind of went in and, and Jimmy came out to sort of meet us and we, we ended up kind of putting it together kind of in the room. So I guess it was kind of put together in a, I don't know, an hour or so probably. Wow, that was, that's actually quite quick, especially for uh, live TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, their show is so, you know, the turnaround on their show is so crazy. I mean, they're doing a show every day. So, uh, so it's crazy. We've got to we've got to respect that they've got to come up with content for every single night. <laughs> like I don't know how they do it. No, it's crazy. I mean, I guess they've got the interviews, which are kind of the easy bit, but they, but they also do tons of stuff. They do like uh, you know comedy bits and all sorts of things every day. So it's uh, it's amazing that they yeah. Well, that video is on YouTube for everyone to check out too. I I had a lot of fun watching that video while I was <laughs> doing my research. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't feel like research. I was just laughing my head off. <laughs> That's good. That's the best kind of research. And before we, uh, you know, nearly finish up this interview today, uh, a lot of our listeners have been wanting to know how others have been getting through this COVID pandemic. And as we know, it's been particularly hard for, you know, entertainers. No more live performances, no more touring. What have you been doing to get through COVID, especially mental health wise? Because I know a lot of people have been struggling in that department. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so tough. It's so tough. Um, I mean, we're starting to see in the UK some theatres opening up, which is really good. And, um, you know, that's a real sort of light at the end of the tunnel. But it, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really tough. I mean, I think we were just in shock, really. I mean, we, we were sort of lucky in a way because we had, we were doing Magic Goes Wrong, the, the show we made with Penn and Teller in the West End and we had a few weeks left to go before the cast change um, and so we did we only met you know when the theatres were shut down we, we sort of only missed a few weeks um, and then the next thing we were due to sort of do myself John and Henry Shields was to was to write series two we were able to continue to do that uh, through using zoom and you know screen sharing the script and, and writing sort of remotely from our from our homes which was um which we worked fine you know in the end um and and, and you know i think we've uh, you know it was good in, in some ways and we've i think we're, we're really pleased with what we've written but i think um that really kept us sane and i think we were really pleased that we had that going you know to keep keep us going i think just i mean i don't know i mean i, I what i've tried to do i, I don't and i don't i, I don't know what advice i give because i think it's really different for everybody and i think you know people should do whatever they can to just sort of find a way to uh, fill the time. I don't think people should put themselves under too much pressure to, you know, I think sometimes, you know, it's like this pressure to be a be productive, or, you know, and I think we shouldn't, people shouldn't feel that because I think it's just, you know, it's just a really tough time and the best thing you can do is, is be there for your loved ones and, and, and have a, you know, try and try and find a way to laugh through it and, um, you know, watch some good telly and, and, and you know, it, I'm sure, you know, things will be back to normal before we know it and, Eventually, this will just be. Oh yeah, you remember that crazy thing that happened in that? Yeah, it'll just be something we'll laugh about. <laughs> yeah, that year, absolutely. I'm sure it will. And I think, um, but equally, I think, it, I think, I think certainly, it's having more of an effect on me uh, than I realise sometimes. Do you know what I mean? I think, it, I think, it, because there's just a sort of base level of stress, kind of all the time. I think you know, other things are kind of magnified, and um, that's kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, generally I'm finding it okay. I've actually I've started a little, a sort of new little project, which has been fun, which is sort of different from uh, theatre called uh, The Mystery Agency, which is like an escape room in a box delivered to your door type service. So I've been doing that. So that's kind of kept me busy. And that's a sort of, you know, co- sort of fairly such a COVID proof kind of thing where, you know, we can, you know, and we're sort of working on that. So they're, doing, they're ready for Christmas. Um, so that I've kind of been keeping busy with that and I've had fun writing puzzles and mystery stories and things uh so that's kind of in in between comedy writing that's kind of kept kept me busy so i guess fine yeah finding a a sort of hobby or a new project or something is is a, is a good thing to do keep yourself sane absolutely and just look after after yourself yeah, i would say well i was gonna ask you what we can expect from you in the future i'm guessing i'm guessing those things you just mentioned your new hobbies <laughs> absolutely totally yeah uh, that was certainly that, and um, yeah, as I say, well, obviously series two, and 
Beyond that, I think, you know, we're, we're obviously, we're optimistic that the shows will be open again soon in, in London and obviously hopefully around the world. We've actually already got a play that goes wrong opening again in Spain. We've got a date for France now. And so there's different, you know, different places we're getting to a different, uh, you know, we're starting to see it starting up and a few other countries as well. I think there's a uh, Finland as well. So yeah, that, so that's positive and hopefully in, in London soon. Um, and hopefully Australia. <laughs> absolutely. Well, we've done, we've done, yeah, we've done Play That Goes Wrong in Australia and we're hopefully it will. Yeah. yeah, come back. I want to see it live again. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know we should. That'd be, that'd be cool. Um, what's, what's, is, is theatre in Australia opening up or how, what are, what's the status? Um, there's a new musical uh, being opened in November in one of our main theatres, so that's promising. I didn't think it was going to come back so soon, but that's really good. We've only got a couple, you know, a couple more months. Fantastic. Well, excellent. That's brilliant. Great news. And with the uh, little escape room box thing you're talking about, will we be able to buy them in Australia as well? You certainly can. I think, um, yeah, there's... Uh, there's um... Uh, if you go to uh, www.themysteryagency.com, um, you can buy. There's three three available at the moment, or there's like a bundle deal if you want to get all three, and uh, they're available now. And there's different, all sorts of different shipping options, so people can get them in in Oz and uh, and and everywhere. So that's great. Well, everyone, go check those out. Oh, I'm going to check it out too after this interview. <laughs> We are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview. Very sad, it's gone so quickly, Henry. But as a closing statement, and what's probably the most important question, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14 year old self? Um, <laughs> well, lots of stuff, you know. I think I was a 14 year old, I probably needed quite a lot of advice. But I would say, kind of like be yourself, you know. I think that that that's probably advice I'd give to. Yeah, to me and to and to lot to, to to people at that age, um, because I think there's a real pressure at that age to sort of go with the crowd and fit in, and uh, of course, like obviously make friends, but also you know be who you are and be an individual and um, don't you know be a first rate whatever that saying is, be a first rate version of yourself rather than a second rate version of someone else. It's probably the advice I'd give. And that is fantastic advice. So thank you very much, Henry. And before we go, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where should they go? So if you want to know more about uh, Mischief, then you can visit www.mischiefcomedy.com. And there's lots of information on there about our TV and stage work. And then if you want to know more about The Mystery Agency, you can visit www.themysteryagency.com uh, where you can learn more about Mystery Agency and buy mysteries online. Easy enough to find you. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure and so much fun to learn a lot about you. <laughs> thank you. Well, this has been lovely. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, talking to you. So thanks for having me on. Hopefully it's been a great start to your day. <laughs> it has. This has set me up. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah. <laughs> And uh, I know that uh, probably it'll be, what, a year or two till international travel's back open, but when you do come back to Sydney, Australia, let me know. I'd love to have a chat in person and meet you. Absolutely, totally, yeah. I would know. But I, I, to be honest, I've, I, even though the shows have been to Australia, I've not myself, so I've got I've to gotta get over I've got to get up. I'll be your tour guide. That would be great. Well, that would be fantastic. Yeah, no, I'd love to. I'd love to love to see Australia. Well, keep in contact and we'll make it happen in the future. Absolutely. That would be great. All right. Well, thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, visit our website, raveituptv.com. And also our new podcast series on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you stream your podcasts. Go check that out now and we will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.